Australia Post today announced it will be cutting mail deliveries to letter ones, that is, letters, to every second day now to save money. Now, before I get to that, there's another cut that it's made that I think is not just sad, it's a little bit of, well, it's appalling. A teacher wrote to me, Jewish, at a Jewish school. She said she got a class to write letters to support Israel in this time of need. Went to send them. Australia Post said, well, we're not delivering uh, letters to Israel. No letters to Israel. Kids were disappointed. I was shocked. I checked it out. It's true. Australia Post says, due to ongoing safety concerns and limited flight capacity, we have temporarily suspended all services for sending to and from Israel. You can't get letters from Israel either. Now, this is weird because we checked. Pack and Send, for instance, told us they could send things for us to Israel. DHL says, no worries. Flights are still going in and out of Ben-Gurion Airport. And Australia Post says it can get mailed to another war zone, to Ukraine, but not to Israel. I don't think it's trying hard enough. Because this is not just a business or logistics issue. This is a moral one. Cutting off Israel is what the racist boycott and divestment movement would want. They want to turn Israel into a pariah. And I say to Australia Post, do something. Joining me is our Wednesday regular, National Senator Matt Canavan, the former Resources Minister. Matt Canavan, I mean... Don't you think Australia Post has a moral duty to go above and beyond to get the mail to and from Israel? Well, Andrew, I think you've exposed a, a scandal here. It's an absolute scandal that uh, our national carrier uh, can't seem to uh, deliver mail, basic mail, in the same way that uh, other international companies can continue to deliver packages. I mean, we would expect, I think, our international mail carrier to be able to continue to provide uh, mail and post to our armed forces, when they're in harm's way, I, to, to my knowledge, that continued while we had servicemen and women deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan in recent decades. Uh, so it seems just completely nonsensical why they couldn't uh, provide mail services to Israel. And from what you've uh, outlined here and what I'm hearing is they, they, they've, they're saying the whole of Israel is, is blocked off. And that just doesn't seem to make any sense with what we seem to know what's happening on the ground there at the moment. And then, as you say, you've got the actual counterexample of the Ukraine right now. So I think some serious questions have to be asked of Australia Post. I'm sure we'll do that here in the Senate, but hopefully they'll come back to you and all Australians sooner than that. Yeah, well, yeah, I, th I think this is a really important issue, really important. Now, uh, Australia Post has also today announced it's going to cut mail deliveries in Australia to every second day, letter deliveries, that is, to cut costs. It's just posted a $200 million loss, so it's got to do something. Uh, do we care that it's uh, had to make the change? To be frank with you, I don't because I live in a town that hasn't had home deliveries since I don't know when, so we've got to go to the next town. But yeah, what do you make of it? Well, look, we already have had more delays in getting mail um, delivered to and from regional Queensland, where I'm from. Uh, so it's not shocking, as you say, they've got to respond to the time, so to speak. Look, it is sad. I mean, I wish we could provide services for those people who continue to use it, but there's obviously got to be a, a balance of costs and benefits. I mean, what I'd like to see is I really want to see Australia Post try and look for growth opportunities. I think Christine Ferguson was doing that uh, uh, a few years ago, um, uh, but uh, I, I'm just not sure. I just want to see that new management look at how they can grow their business, not just manage decline. And I'm particularly interested in making sure that Australia Post can provide banking services, other services. There's lots of things they could do right now and with their 3,000-odd uh, uh, postal uh, branch network uh, so let, let, I'd love to see some positive news from Australia Post as well, rather than just take out services. And send mail to Israel too. Yeah, that uh, was do a, that. <laughs> Surely we yes. <laughs> well, they, <laughs> well, that was Christine Holgate that did it, and they're saying now that, you know, Christine parcels Holgate, is sorry, the uh, uh, future. Yep. That it's straight. Different Christine. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, parcels of the future, apparently Australians are less, half as, less, uh, as likely to buy online as uh, people overseas, and maybe that's where the growth is. Matt, do you remember, I'm sure you do, you're a Queenslander, <laughs> you were involved, you remember how the Greens and global warming extremists tried to stop Adani, an Indian company, from investing in a new coal mine in Queensland. Uh, even Labor, as you remember, was uh, iffy about <laughs> encouraging Adani. They treated it like a leper, basically. In contrast, as you told me uh, before the show, the Biden in administration in the US is lending Adani more than half a billion dollars US to build a new port in Sri Lanka to cut out the Chinese who grabbed another big port in Sri Lanka when it got into debt and had to give it away. What does this tell you? 
Well, it, it, I do remember it, Andrew. It's about half my political life was spent fighting these radical greenies that wanted to stop a coal mine here in Australia. Fortunately, we beat them. And that uh, Adani Carmichael mine is operating right now, employing 2,000 Australians and making lots of money for us. The unfortunate thing is they did. Those radical greenies did succeed in stopping the Australian government providing uh, a loan. And well, they used their, their, uh, their vehicle of the Queensland Labor government to stop that loan going to expand the rail line. We could have had a 100 million tonne per annum coal rail line going out to the Galilee Basin right now. Instead, it's only 40 million tonnes per annum because we didn't do what the Biden administration is doing and providing a loan to a company that wants to build infrastructure in other countries. And to keep in mind, just to put in perspective the cost of that, 60 million tonnes of coal a year at, let's say, an average price of $100 a tonne. I'm being very conservative there. That's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's $6 billion of revenue for Australia every year that we forego because of that lost opportunity. And in royalties, it would be $600 million a year and generally about the same amount in company tax. So... You know, it's a massive cost to our economy that we have not... We built the, the small-size version of the Adani Carmichael mine. Absolutely. And, and it's a loss to all Australians that we've lost this economic opportunity because we just have such a narrow view, I think, of the world here in Australia sometimes. And uh, unfortunately, oh, there's too many Tell greenies me um, who haven't had a shower ha in the last few weeks. How about, so. frightening off, how about frightening off investment in new coal and gas? And we just saw... Uh, over the last period, we've had a fall in revenue from coal and gas exports. That's going to get uh, worse in the future because we're not bringing on the new resources thanks to the weakness of government and frightening off uh, the investors. But listen, uh, one thing before we go, I'm running out of time. I reckon one of the big issues that we face, Matt, is how to argue with each other without bullying and screaming and carrying on. Today in Melbourne, for instance, you had global warming extremes actually causing traffic chaos by blocking the roads. Here's one of them. We are sorry that it's had to come to this, but we feel like we don't have a choice. Well, that clown should know he does have a choice, and the choice is get off the damn road. Uh, the, and in Brisbane, up your way, pro-Palestinian protesters crashed the lighting of the Queensland Parliament's Christmas tree. Here they are. I mean, seriously, Matt, increasingly these causes look like uh, just excuses to bully people and still feel good about it. Oh, absolutely. They are bullies and they show no respect for other Australians and other, the rights of other Australians. But, look, I do think while the, 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 most of the blame needs to be put at the protesters themselves, the leadership here in Australia is sometimes sanctioning and encouraging this. We just saw the other week the spectacle of yep. Labor ministers uh, happy to see students uh, leave school and protest. So if that's the example they're setting, we'll get more of this disrespect. We've got to set an example at the top.